Good morning. Today's psalm is Psalm 8. We'll go ahead and read it um, and work our way through it. Psalm 8 is to the choir master, according to the Githith, the Psalm of David. Again, that's uh, the term Githith is a stylistic term, more than likely, uh, for the music, for how it should be um, said um, in, among the people. Verse 1. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babies and infants, you have established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. So these first two verses of Psalm 8, and Psalm 8 is not that, that long of a psalm, but these first two verses focus on the, the majesty, the glory of, of God. Um, and it puts that um, in um, right out there in the front. And then that's important because the following uh, verses are going to talk about how insignificant we are in light of his, his glory. So the Lord, Yahweh, Yahweh, who is our Lord. So let me just back up there. Verse 1, notice that it says, our, O Lord, our Lord. That's not Lord twice, not in the Hebrew. It's Yahweh, our Lord. All right, so just uh, be mindful of that. That's not necessarily repetition. That's just saying Yahweh, our Lord, um, how majestic is your name. Your glory is above the heavens. So if his glory is above the heavens, and the heavens are above the earth, his glory is above all things. Uh, verse 3. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you care for him? That's the question David's posing. Who are we? Who we're, we're, I mean, in light of that, what are we? We're really quite insignificant. Verse 5, Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. So despite this, despite how insignificant we are, and this is part of how God gets uh, glory, this is part of why we praise him, this is why we marvel at it, uh, this is how um, we should fall down um, upon our, our faces and just praise God, because who are we that he should do this? But he does do this, right? He crowns us. Um, with glory and honor, uh, not because we deserve it, but simply because he decided he, it was in his will to do so. Uh, verse 6, you have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of seas. O Lord, again, O Yahweh, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Uh, so starting there, 6 onward, uh, that should bring to light uh, Genesis 1, uh, the creation mandate in verse uh, 26, where God says, uh, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish in the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So Psalm 8 is... Um, praising God in light of the creation mandate that God is this remarkable, glorious um, God. Yahweh is our Lord. Um, who are we? Who is man that he would even consider to do this? Um, and by giving us the image of God, he has crowned us with glory and honor because only we, nothing else in all of creation, bears the image of God. Only mankind does. And because of that, we have been given dominion over creation. We've been given the creation mandate to um, subdue the earth, to fill it, the procreation, um, as well as to take care of it, to steward it, right? That was Adam's primary purpose of being placed in the garden was to care for creation. We have to remember that creation, we are put here to serve creation, not so that creation serves us. Uh, so the Psalm 8, uh, again, uh, just focuses on the greatness of God and the place of man um, in God's creation. I hope this has been a blessing for you. Have a good Friday and Monday we'll have Psalm 9.